All right. So this is digital transformation, exponential change. Once upon a time, business as usual was often good enough. No more. Where we are going, good enough is dead. In a world where everything is connected, where everything is equally excellent, where performance is reaching perfection, there's only one space left to innovate in. You. Right now, you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization, mobilization, augmentation, disintermediation, automation. Well, the list goes on. Science fiction is becoming science fact. Think about self-driving cars or computers that can learn and think. The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. With change, it's always gradually, then suddenly, well, things really have stopped happening gradually. This change is exponential. Everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent. Cars, cities, ports, farms, even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other. These game changers are also combinatorial. They amplify each other, creating a perfect storm of change. Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating but not at being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights and wisdom. Technology represents the how of change, but humans represent the why. The future is about holistic business model. The opportunity is to be liquid, to learn just in time, not just in case, not single improvements, but complete transformations, not individual systems, but new ecosystems. Humanity is where true and lasting value is created. We will engage, relate and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. Are you the one driving change or are you being driven by it? Change that used to be to happen gradually now is happening what? Exponentially. And why not? It is because the technology that is causing or driving this change is combinatorial. You know, I was teaching uh, economics of information technology before in the MSIT. You know, um, the there was a debate before because uh, prior to the internet revolution we have so many technology revolutions that happened in the past okay we have the steam engine revolution we have radio we have television and, and many other by the way technological revolutions 
And uh, in the past, you know, say television, how long did it take television to reach, say, 100 million, 100 million uh, clients or people? I think it took it about, say, 20 years. But the internet, okay, the internet, how long did it take, by the way, to, to develop and mature? I think uh, the internet was first commercially used in 1995. By year 2000, it was already a mature technology. Right? Why is that? As compared to other you know, technological revolutions that had happened in the past. Why do you think the internet became a mature technology in a matter of five years? What could be the reasons behind? Now, it's very important to, for us to understand the historical and foundational backgrounds. And, uh, you know, because I have taught you already some philosophical background of technology. Now we let's go for you know uh, historical background. Why do you think the internet, as compared to other technological revolutions, matured in a matter of five years, from 1995 to year 2000? Any guess? Any theory? All right. Um, you remember the dot com boom? Dot com, everybody, you know, wanted to have a website, okay? Dot com. Number two, you remember the Y2K bug? Raise your hand. Who can remember Y2K bug? The millennium bug. So that contributed, by the way, to the rapid development and maturity of the internet. Okay? And number three, is because of the unlimited supply of raw material. Okay? I repeat. Because of the unlimited supply of the raw material, as compared to steam engine, to radio, cars, you know, uh, television. In the internet, Technology, economy. What would you require, by the way, to have a website? HTML codes, okay? HTML codes. Are you going to run out of HTML codes? Bits and bytes. All right? Bits and bytes. We will never, in, in fact, it's open source even, okay? People can use and reuse HTML codes. And then the one that I mentioned a while ago, it's combinatorial. Alright? Combinatorial. People will just combine one innovation with another innovation and then what will happen? Come up with new innovation. When I was doing computer engineering, my design project was... Uh, I was using sensor in 1993. Okay? 1993, I was already using two sensors for my computer engineering project. Alright? So I have a heat sensor and a particle sensor in the atmosphere. Okay? Those who understand uh, a little of, uh, you know, engineering, so, heat sensor and then uh, particle sensor. The data that will be generated by these two sensors are analog by nature. Okay? So, therefore, I need to have an analog to digital converter. At that time, I used an 8088 Intel microprocessor. Alright? 8088 Intel microprocessor. And I think at that time, I used about 16 kilobytes of memory. Okay? I program it using assembly language. And my output, 
I use light emitting diodes. Okay? Green and red. Green and red. So I'll take the sensor, the temperature in the environment. If it is within range, I'll put a green. Okay? If it is outside of the range, I give activate the red light emitting diode, LED. So, simple computer that I designed, 1993. Year 2000, when I was teaching computer engineering at, in the Philippines, you, my students were already experimenting on driverless cars. Basically, what we're saying here in digital transformation is, you know, we are seeing now from atoms to bits, everything is being digitized. All right? Almost, I did say everything. Almost everything. Uh, an increasingly bigger part of economical value is generated through working with what? With bits. So we used to have atoms. Atoms, uh, the smallest uh, component of matter. Okay? Physical matter. So we have books now converted into bits and bytes. So what happens if your product becomes digital? Okay, say Kindle ebooks outsold paper books on Christmas. 24 out of the 25 largest newspapers in Europe and North America are experiencing record declines in circulation. All right. Question, will everything become digital? Can I say here, can you pay the ham now and then I'll send it in the slices via the internet? Can we do this, by the way? Of course not. It's not possible. Okay? So, means to say, everything, we cannot digitize everything. Hmm? And ICT in business management, information technologies, what for? This have been our topic for the past uh, many days. Okay? We talk about how we can use, how we can best use ICT in business management. I hope we are not like this uh, farmer who look at a technology and then only to be, you know, to be pulled by one horsepower, okay? You remember this image when we talk about business model, okay? The information economy. If we implement technology, you know, in isolation without considering our business model, this will happen, by the way. This will happen. And of course, uh, in our previous discussions, we identified areas and opportunities wherein technology can really add value in the organization. And in that discussion, we talk about our value chain. This is exactly our value chain. All right? But we didn't stop there, by the way. Uh, after analyzing our value chain from our primary activities to, you know, secondary activities, uh, we went to the point of understanding about value web. I don't know if you remember the value web. Anyone who can remember what the value web is? Value web is, you know, two or three or more independent organizations with their own value change, okay? Collaborating, working together through the internet, okay? Through technologies, in order to, you know, to deliver goods and services to the same clients, okay? That's the value web. Say, for example, you have an e-commerce business. We're going to talk about e-commerce later. E-commerce business, all right? So, you're selling, say, uh, farm produce, farm products. And we know, based on the previous slide, we cannot digitize farm products. So it will remain to be in its physical form. But you're doing business online, selling those farm products. 
So people will visit your website. They will order maybe using an app. And then they have to send their payments in there. Right? So we need uh, Safaricom maybe infrastructure like the M-Pesa. Or we need a financial institution. Maybe they would like to pay by debit card or credit card. All right. So that's another value chain there. A financial institution has its own value chain. And then, of course, now once payment is confirmed, you need to deliver that item, India. So you need a logistical company to deliver that physical good. So you see now, you as an online business and then another financial institution and another what? Another logistical company. Three organizations with different value chains collaborating, working together in order to produce and deliver that good and service to a common client. All right? So that's the value web. And then here comes, of course, mobility, all right, with the dramatic growth and development of mobile phones. Cell phones before used to be has only two functionalities, call and text. But today, those simple devices, mobile phones, have become more and more powerful. They are computers in itself. Okay, they have more functionalities, more power, and more capabilities. So, here comes now the development of mobility. And of course, now we are seeing Web 2.0. I think now, uh, I don't know if we have Web 3.0 already. Semantics. Okay. So, Web 2.0 is... Uh, one of the driving forces of, you know, drivers of digital transformation, okay? Because of user participation. Used to be it's only the organization or the company that is serving the customer. But because of Web 2.0, the interaction between customers and the company has really, you know, uh, developed and prospered. Okay, next, Demi Moore's Law. I don't know if you, you remember Moore's Law. Moore's Law again, what does it say? Moore's Law. So that's technological change. You see the rate of change for technology? And yet, look at social change. It's half the, you know, it's almost half the rate of change of technology. That's why, as I mentioned to you, that video that we watch was uploaded four years ago. All right? And social change is a little slower. We couldn't catch up with the, the rate of change of technology. Okay? That's why, remember, that's why I really started with the philosophies of technology about instrumentalism and determinism. It's because of this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? If we are guided by those two philosophies. So sometimes you have to remember that people are slower in terms of change as compared to technological change. Okay? So look, we have to be mindful of technology uh, as an instrumentalist. Okay? But at the same time, we have to be open also to the, you know, to the influences of technology. In fact, this is old data already, but we are seeing them very, very true today. Even the digitalization of leisure in Europe. All right, TV consumption by younger generation experiencing a decline. All right, the younger group is less inclined to read newspapers and watch television. Here at home, by the way, I have no competition uh, in the, in my television. Okay, my children. You know, seldom use the television, if not at all. Okay, where are they? They're online, right? They're online. What else? More power for consumers now. Save up to 40% in 
prepare your shopping list. We tell in which online retailer your order will be cheaper. Pay your order online. In fact, even uh, Tuskis here, Timol, uh, were studying uh, how they are doing this already. We hope to write a case for Tuskis, okay, as they do this. And digitization of social relations, okay, over 50% of the world's population is under 30 years old. Very young population. Facebook tops Google for weekly traffic in the U.S. One of eight couples married in the U.S. met via social media. Next, Facebook added over 200 million users in less than a year. If Facebook were a country, it would be the world's largest. True indeed. I think they have about 1.4 or 1.5 billion netizens already. Much bigger than China, much bigger than India. 80% of companies use social media for recruitment. A big percentage of them is using LinkedIn. Okay? About 95%. The fastest growing segment on Facebook is 55 to 65 years old female. In fact, my children told me last time, you know, Facebook are for old people. So... There are many young generations that are sharing, you know, leaving Facebook because they said Facebook is for is for old people. Young people are more on Instagram. Yeah? Or WhatsApp. Okay, TikTok, yes. Generation Y and Generation Z, they consider email a passe. And some universities have stopped distributing email accounts already. People care more about how their social graph ranks products and services than how Google ranks them. Agencies. Okay. So we have agency banking. We have agencies in terms of travel and so on. Right. Flight hotels. When I was in Europe, by the way, I didn't need anyone to help me. Okay. In fact, uh, ah, e-commerce here. So, remember, when we were discussing about uh, Zara, this is not 2010 data. When we were discussing Zara, I think it was year 2000. Eventually, when 2010, an emerging category are clothes and complements, food and household products. So... It is also the same reason why Zara adopted emerging technologies, okay? That's why now, if you visit their website, they are now selling clothes online. Because even the technologies uh, have already also developed, okay? So, in fact, you can have apps wherein you can see yourself wearing the clothes, and you see yourself, you know, and you can assess uh if it fits you then if it fits you then you buy the clothes otherwise uh, you can go to the next clothes okay something like that there are apps already that can help you do it remember the return rate before at zara is what 50 percent if you remember our discussion 50 percent because really people wanted to see themselves in front of the mirror but today, with the development of new softwares, you can do the same thing, you know, online. Ah, don't you know that I'm doing uh, online trading, online investment using uh, my Genesis Capital, by the way. So this is my account, okay? I'm buying and selling stocks, by the way, online. And I don't need a physical broker, by the way, to help me. All right, when we, my wife and I, went to Paris, France, hmm. I use Airbnb, by the way. How much did I pay? Oh, twenty-seven dollars times three nights, eighty-two dollars. Total, one hundred nine dollars. Imagine three nights in Paris. I spent only one hundred nine dollars, by the way. Oh, after that we went to Oslo, Norway. All right, let's talk about e-commerce. Electronic commerce is the process of buying, selling, or exchanging products, services, and information via computer networks. 
By definition, e-business is a broader definition of e-commerce that includes not just the buying and selling of goods and services, but also servicing customers, collaborating with business partners, conducting electronic transactions within an organization. And then there are about pure and partial e-commerce. Pure e-commerce is, you know, you have a digital product, you have a digital process, and you have a digital delivery agent okay that's pure e-commerce so this is the core of electronic commerce all right this is pure e-commerce this one because the product is digital the agent is digital and the process is also digital so the traditional commerce all dimensions are physical uh, in the interview the video of uh, James Mwangi, he mentioned about brick and mortar organizations, okay? Brick and mortar organizations. All economy organizations perform all businesses offline and sell physical products by means of physical agents, okay? So pure e-commerce, all dimensions are digital. We have all our pure online or virtual New economy, sell products or services online. Partial e-commerce, a mix of digital and physical dimensions. We call them as the click and mortar type of organizations. Okay, Conduct e-commerce activities and do their primary business in the physical world. So we can talk about an e-commerce framework because e-commerce applications supported by infrastructure and five support areas like people, public policy, technical standards, business partners, and support services. So this is the framework for e-commerce. So we need people, public policy, marketing and advertising, support services, and business partners. All right. So and of course you need your IT infrastructure here. So e-commerce in itself is interdisciplinary by nature. Okay. So if you want to be doing e-commerce, then uh, you have to be conversant with marketing and then computer science, consumer behavior and psychology, finance, economics, management information systems, accounting and auditing, and then management, business law and ethics, and many others. By, way, by the way, let me just talk about consumer behavior and psychology. When you are on Google, by the way, and you type uh, digital camera, as compared to you type digital cameras, what's, is there a difference when someone, someone is typing digital camera and someone is typing digital cameras? Because it has something to do with consumer behavior and psychology. When you type digital camera, it gives you the definition of the camera. When you type digital cameras, it gives you outlets where you can buy. Uh -huh. So therefore, therefore, uh, I think um, once you type digital cameras, it, it, uh, Google assumes you are trying to compare prices and purchase. So it goes to the commerce bit of it. I think uh, it's an element called uh, machine learning, uh -huh. whereby. Google has collected information, but if you type a digital camera, most likely you're, you're looking at the features of a camera and what a camera is, but when you output an S, it looks like you're looking at a variety, so it, think, it now channels you to websites where, you know, like eBay, where you can now buy the camera. Fantastic, okay. Exactly the same, Google will price... Do you know that companies are bidding for those keywords, okay? For those keywords, because you don't want to be displayed if you are the com if you're a company selling digital camera. You don't want to be displayed on the 1,000th position, okay? People will not browse your website anymore. You want to be on the top 10, Cindy. Right? When Google ranks you and display you on the screen a result in the algorithm. You wanted to be on the top 10. So at now, you will have potential buyers. So, you know, Google realized that consumer behavior and psychology. Okay? In e-commerce, 
That's why when they return the results of a search, they sell this, those keywords, by the way. And, of course, we have benefits of organizations to organizations for e-commerce. By the way, can I just give you this to read? No? Uh, it's very self-explanatory. Uh, let me just... Uh, Sky Garden. Uh, Sky Garden is uh, an emerging company. They're trying now to compete and defeat uh, Jumia. A future without shops. Is that even possible, by the way? Is this possible? A future without shops. A study on studios estima que el 40% de las tiendas británicas cerrarán en 5 años. A study by Deloitte forecast that 40% of physical UK retail stores will close within 5 years. But this is an old study. Okay? And it's happening, by the way. Under strain as 15 shops close every day. The Guardian. Yeah. Like that. Physical stores are closing down. Again, because of e-commerce. Yes, there are some shops that may still be open, but the, now remember when the drone tech, when we have perfected the drone technology already, and there are some companies experimenting already using drones rather than the boda boda eh, to deliver goods. Okay, so those in the construction and the real estate sector, one of the coming developments may be. In that sector would be in the bu building code, okay? Everybody will should have a helipad, okay? Helipad for drones to land, okay? To make the delivery. How to reach the new consumer? <laughs> there are over 320 million blogs. By the way, I'm a blogger myself, okay? Uh, I hope you have visited my website. Uh, my, 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 my YouTube channel. Those who are interested in organic farming, by the way, you can kindly consider uh, uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. Okay. 34% of bloggers post opinions about products and brands. 78% mm. of consumers trust peer recommendations. Only 14% trust advertisements. Only 18% of traditional TV campaigns generate positive ROI. Again, if you are targeting the young people and they are not watching television, they are not re reading newspapers, then I think, are we not uh, using the, right, the, the, the wrong channel, by the way, to communicate to our potential customers? From communicating to influencing, many people, by the way, are doing this already. They are not only communicating they're influencing people in buying products okay so new marketing tools word of mouth especially if you go you go viral okay so these are the things that will uh, the three sectors by the way that will really prosper post covid-19 a lot of development on terms of tools for telework okay and then online education. This will be the new normal. Okay. And then of course now a lot of digital marketing. So digital marketing will be a big business. Online education will be a big business. And then tools for telework will be a big business. All right. Do we need to be visionaries to be successful here? Before you answer that. Bill Gates, by the way, in 1981, said this, 640 kilobytes of RAM memory should be enough for everyone. <laughs> in 1981. He said this in 1981. 640 kilobytes of RAM should be enough for everyone in 1981.